Hello and welcome to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. The State Department follies. It's quite remarkable what one can learn or not learn from media briefings at the U.S. State Department. This is the place where the U.S. government presents to the world its view on global affairs. Others are less charitable. This is where Washington is determined to construct and control the geopolitical narrative. To Crosstalk U.S. State Department Narratives, I'm joined by my guest Lionel in New York. He is a legal analyst and news decoder at LionelMedia.com. We also have Scott Rickard in Tampa. He's a former American intelligence linguist and in Clute, Texas. We crossed to Daniel McAdams. He is the executive director of the Ron Paul Institute for Peace and Prosperity. All right, gentlemen, Crosstalk rules in effect. That means you can jump in any time you want, and I very much appreciate it. Uh, before we go to our discussion here, I'd like uh, our uh, guests to take a listen to and our viewers to watch. A U.S. State Department official, well, struggling with a question about boots on the ground in Syria. Let's give it a listen. Um, and there was never this, you know, there, there was never this no boots on the ground. I don't know where this keeps yes, coming from. Yeah. I, I just, I don't see it that way. For months and months and months, the, the uh, mantra from the president and the, everyone else in the administration has been no boots on the ground. And no, now... That is not true. What? It's just not true, man. It is... <laughs> It's just not true. It's true. No, it's not. All right. Okay. I'd like to go to Daniel here. Uh, you know, this is one of many uh, video clips that you can watch at the State Department briefings. One of the interesting things is, is that you can watch them here on RT, and you can watch them sometimes here on Crosstalk, but you probably don't see it on CNN very often. I wonder why, Daniel. Go ahead. That last one, Peter, was a gem. He said putting troops on the ground in Syria would be a terrible mistake. <laughs> he's just admitting that he's made a terrible mistake. What, what else do you need to know? Uh, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> just after he made this announcement, uh, the respected uh, organization here, PolitiFact, which checks what politicians say versus actual objective reality like we like to think about, they, they took a look at John Kirby's statement about, you know, it's never been our... our uh, to have boots on the ground uh, and they looked at it closely because there is an argument that well that means not a huge combat force this and that so they they said they took this into consideration the other the counter arguments but they made an interesting point that president obama reaped the political benefit of assuring americans at the time of his announcement that there would be no troops on the ground and therefore uh, they ruled this a false statement they ruled that john kirby was lying about it. So this is PolitiFact here in the U.S. <laughs> well, okay, I, I'm, maybe he's lying about it. I think he's just an idiot. That's the problem here, and I want to talk about this more on this program. Lionel, <laughs> if I can go to you. No, no, no. I mean, if you look at these briefings, the State Department officials look as dumb as the journalists that are sitting there, with the exception of a couple of people. And you know who I'm talking about? Our RT correspondent here and Matt Lee from the oh, AP. Pashat. Okay. Other than, other than that, other than that, it's the stenography union. I mean, it's really the blind speaking to the blind here, the deaf Stenography. speaking to the deaf. Go ahead. Look, Go ahead, don't Lionel. you understand something? Don't you understand that some of the greatest example of political comedic humor has been uh, uh, this individual and also his predecessor, Marie Harf? If you look at this. Now, what we're doing is I'm a lawyer by profession. I try a lawyer. I love to parse and to, to peel apart the definitions of things and to understand. I'm a local dentalist by nature. But... What is absolutely, profoundly, beyond hysterically amazing is to look in the camera and say, what are you talking about? I never said boots on the ground. Nobody said this. And you know, Peter, after a while, I'm thinking, maybe, maybe I didn't remember this. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm hallucinating because it's said with such a... He's Lionel, so, uh, Lionel himself, and that's why we have, and that's why we have you on the program because you know what? You're the one that's got it right here. Let me go to Scott in Tampa here. Again, you know, one that I look at these spokespersons, I mean, I have a hard time believing that they even believe what they're saying. There was another event a few months ago when we, <laughs> no, seriously, when an RT correspondent uh, asked the question about Turkish troops in, in Iraq, a legitimate question.
question uh, about the NATO alliance. And then they turn around and say, aren't you embarrassed by your question? And the fact of the matter is, he's embarrassed by his answers. That's what gets these people very upset. Because if you challenge the narrative, people get angry and you're crazy. Go ahead, Scott. Well, you asked the right question of... Uh of Daniel earlier, you know, this is not talked about on CNN because it's not allowed. I mean, when you start talking about these particular events occurring, these individuals aren't allowed to even speak to these events uh, with any kind of truth. Look what happened here at CENTCOM when uh, some of the intelligence guys in, uh, near Tampa were actually trying to tell the truth about the intelligence reports. They lost their jobs because they were basically being told to <coughs> lie on the intelligence reports, even in t inside the intelligence community. So what we have here is a, you know, a, just a, a bed of lies that is just continuing, and these individuals that are involved, you know, boots on the ground, for God's sakes, there's almost, there's going to be 7,500 troops in Iraq alone, we're sending in Apache helicopters, we're sending in missiles, we're about ready to provide a, just a giant attack on 7,000 ISIS members that are in Mosul uh, alongside the Iraqis that we're training. We trained as many as 20,000 Iraqis now. So boots on the ground are alive and kicking like crazy in Iraq. And they've got about 300 in Syria, and certainly these 300 in Syria are working alongside the PKK and the Peshmerga, because those are our allies there. We've, we're going to give we're going to give them 450 million dollars. We're giving the Kurds in order to basically recruit them and make them our friends as we go to war against Mosul and the the remaining small factions around Raqqa. So this is really uh, you know a, a, a concerted effort by Obama and the administration to have some kind of success before he leaves office in January next year. <laughs> well, I'm not counting on that one. Uh, uh, Daniel, if I could go back to you and include Texas, because one of the things that's so important here when I look at these briefings is that the State Department is determined to, uh, to construct this narrative. And if anyone doubts it, um, I, uh, you're, you're, you're somehow a fifth columnist, uh, uh, you're an apologist for someone right, uh, like that. The problem is they don't like to answer real questions, and they don't want follow-ups here. This is a very authoritarian mindset because it wasn't always this way uh, and I have to re uh, and I'm not you know not that I was that uh, old during the Vietnam War because I was a child but it was the media that actually helped tip the balance against the war because they were honest about what was going over going on over there none of that exists today at all you have to be an advocate and toe the line or you're an enemy go ahead Daniel yeah and it was easy back when it was Marie Harf who was doing these briefings because Frankly, she seemed fairly ditzy, you know, she didn't seem to, to have any clue. But the one thing that we haven't discussed about John Kirby, he's not some kid fresh out of journalism school. He's an admiral in the U.S. Navy. This is a pretty high-ranking person. So on, on one hand, it, I guess playing devil's advocate, maybe it's not that he's so dumb. Maybe the crap that they're feeding him is, is so awful, there's just no other way to deliver it. But, you know, my favorite in the... Uh, John Kirby, Matt Lee, greatest hits was just a few weeks ago, if you remember, when, uh, when John Kirby said, it's not just us saying Assad must go, the entire international community, <laughs> and Matt Lee guffawed and said, what? What are you talking about? As if Russia, China, India, you know, the majority of the population in the world just doesn't count. If you're not, if you're not part of us, you just don't That's count. That's right. And, Peter, and, we, and, and they, I don't recognize uh, North Korea as a, a nuclear power, but it is, okay? I mean, it's amazing what they don't want to recognize. Lionel, you're, Peter, you're, go ahead, jump in, my friend. Go ahead, jump in. Peter. Do you understand? Uh, I am. Um, we are. We are uh, approximately the same generation, and I remember every single night watching Vietnam stories with Walter Me too. Cronkite. Me too. Me the too. The problem that we are missing is that you have a con. You you have a conflation. Number one, do you know what you will never, ever, ever see on American mainstream media ever anywhere a map? <laughs> never. Number two. We have a torpid, a, 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 a somnambulist community who are walking around apparently addled by fluoride or whatever. We don't care about this. In researching, I went to Google, okay, looking for these stories. And I said, where is the American coverage of this? I had to go elsewhere. I had to go to foreign and alternative media. Yep, yep. Nobody cares about this. That's right. We're talking about angels in the head of a but pen. See, but that's the so, whole so point. Aside that's, from all of this, that's the whole. Nobody, I'm sorry. 
Right, yeah, but that's the whole point. Lionel, you're absolutely right. Let me go to Scott here because what Lionel's getting at here but is that there is no, you're never presented a context because if there is no context, then you cannot make any kind of valid assessment. And without the context, you're just going to listen to what you're told. And you know what? Watch those briefings. Everybody's just writing down what they hear without a murmur, without a murmur. Go ahead, Scott. Well, that's exactly right. These are not reporters. These are repeaters in the United States. You know, the same thing happened to me when I was interviewed by uh, Sophie Shevardnadze. Uh, she, basically, uh, she basically interviewed me about the Maidan, and when they covered me in the American News on CNN, they called me a conspiracy theorist, <laughs> and, and the, uh, the guy that did the actual interview uh, was Brian Seltzer from quote-unquote reliable sources at CNN. And when I called his cell phone uh, post the show and said, hey, look, uh, Brian, I, I understand that you uh, called me a conspiracy theorist on your show, he didn't even know my name. And, you know, he was, he was interviewing Liz Wall, the, uh, you know, the, the, the quote-unquote uh, uh, defector from RT, who was absolutely nothing but a, uh, a joke because of her Hungarian background. So, you know, the fact is, is that, you know, this is a, a, a media uh, circus uh, that it might as well be uh, the Springer show in the United States. There's nothing of, of intellectual value in but the American Peter media when it comes to the news. And, and go ahead. Lionel, you want to jump in real quick before the break? Go ahead. Peter, what, what you must understand is, first and foremost, what the mainstream media here love is the bad guy. A Manichaean, apodictic bad guy. We are told today, this is the bad guy. Overnight, Gaddafi was a bad guy. When he wore that Sergeant Pepper outfit, yeah. that was it. He kills his people. He does? Yes. Yeah. This guy's a bad guy. Next. What we are told is that what when you hear this, you mentioned the word Lionel, conspiracy Lionel, theory. Lionel, let me jump like in here. We, we got we got we got to go to a break. After a short break, we'll continue our discussion on the U.S. State Department. Stay with RT. Welcome back to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. To remind you, we're discussing the U.S. State Department's geopolitical narrative. Okay, if I go back to Daniel and Clute, Texas, there, there, there's so many greatest hits that we can talk about. Uh, one of my favorites is that um, when, uh, when a, one of the spokeswomen uh, said that the United States is not involved with illegal regime change around the world, which is really <laughs> a bizarre way of looking at history. I mean, this is common knowledge. I mean, if you make any effort whatsoever, I mean, you can read the Pentagon Papers. I mean, they're old, but I mean, there's a long, uh, terrible history there. Uh, there's so many other histories. Histories out there that you know you, you can go to a, a bookstore and you can pick up pick it up. I mean it's not it's not difficult to get this kind of information and and it's been confirmed by official sources. There's no conspiracy theories here. But you have someone in the State Department st staring right into the camera, right into a crowd of people, saying, "Oh, we never do that." I mean, does she really believe that or or what? I mean, how do you read something like that? It's so amazing to come to hear that coming from a U.S. State Department, someone who is representing the United States in in, in global media. Go ahead, Daniel. Well, it's, I think there's a point to it, and the reason they do it, it's sort of the kind of media you would expect in an authoritarian or totalitarian society, because what she does when she says something like that is she draws a line, and anyone who questions that is a conspiracy theorist, uh, is against the U.S. government, hates America, so people like us that say stop doing regime change, it's bad for America, all of a sudden we become anti-American, anti-patriotic, so it's a very clever propaganda ruse. However, as I say, there is an objective reality. John McCain was on the stage in Kiev. He was urging people on. There is a thing called the National Endowment for Democracy. It does get millions of taxpayer dollars. It does conduct re regime changes overseas. These things really do exist, no matter how much you deny them. Our challenge is to get people to realize that we're the patriots and they're the anti-Americans. You know, Scott, one of the things that's really sad for me is that... Peter? I, I, hang on here. You know, all of us are very concerned with these issues, not just to, to score points, because I think an informed society can, can begin to make good decisions here. But that's the whole point, Scott, isn't it? To not to inform people, because all of us are very much interested in foreign, foreign affairs, very much so. But the average 
American is given so little access on a daily basis during our busy, busy, busy lives about what's actually going on in the world. So when a State Department official says we never involved in illegal regime change around the world, oh no, we, we only do good things in the world, I think a lot of people buy it, unfortunately. Go ahead, Scott. Well, they absolutely do. If you look at the educational system, if you look at the, uh, the actual books that they are given to the American uh, students of this country, and you look at the actual agendas. I mean, the Trilateral Commission got together in the 60s when there was a movement against the Vietnam War, and they decided that they were over-educating the collegiate students in the, uh, uh, in the international and political affairs and civics of the country, and they started to uh, actually modify the educational system in the colleges and universities with the strategic objective of making it more service-oriented and more uh, business-oriented to the industrial side of the United States. And that was really a concerted effort by the uh, Trilateral Commission in the, uh, in the 60s. There's a great documentary out there that covers it. It's uh, called The Lottery of Birth. It's a fantastic documentary that goes into excruciating detail about how this was uh, actually constructed uh, by, the, uh, by the U.S. government. And interestingly enough, uh, Brzezinski was involved in that. Mm -hmm. Lionel, jump in in New York. Go ahead. Peter, 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 I remember, first of all, I am not a conspiracy theorist. I'm a conspiracy analyst, as the great Gore Vidal said. I remember yes. when I was young, when we were proud to question the Vietnam War from yeah. the Gulf of Tonkin, we, we knew it was a lie. And now it's the opposite. Do you know why today all in the family would not play this classic Archie Bunker America story? It's because Americans, I'm sorry to say, in the mainstream media would identify more with Archie Bunker and say, where's the joke? Yeah. Because there, it's not so much that there was a conspiracy on the part of the mainstream media. The thing that, 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 that we are starving for, truth and understanding, is absent. We are a fast food nation, but also fast food news. We're eating garbage. Yeah, yeah. We're not thinking is something that hurts. We want stories about Tom Brady and footballs being deflated. We want little easy bite-sized morsel. You know, we have the attention span of a gnat. It, it, but that's, we don't but that, care about But that's done intentionally, unfortunately. I think we'd all agree. You know, Daniel, I think another thing all of us on this program, and I think a lot of people watching this program as well, I feel insulted so many times when I watch these officials explain the worlds to me. It's so insulting to intelligence and common sense. Uh, MH17, the Russians did it. Can you show any evidence? No, they did it. Uh, Twitter, watch YouTube. You know, I, I, it's so insulting. You know, and then they show aerial pictures from a commercial company that's all sketchy and grainy. But when it comes to Syria, when the world is, can, can see what the Russian Air Force has done against ISIS, you know, then they have these really amazing color pictures. You know, I mean, you know, state of the art here. And but when they say there's, there's, we don't need to show physical evidence, and it's incumbent upon them to show physical evidence. It's an insult to intelligence. It's an insult to common sense. Go ahead, Daniel. Well, this is also part of the rise of the warfare state in the U.S., you know. The idea of perception management, the Pentagon spends hundreds of millions of dollars on this, and so does State Department yeah. and other aspects of the U.S. government. Uh, it's essentially propaganda. But, you know, what's, what's interesting that most Americans, if they heard this, would be repulsed. Yeah. The reality is Citizens who, citizens who lived in communist countries were far more civic-minded, far more freedom-minded than Americans during communism, or especially now. When they looked at the state media and the state newspapers, they knew this is all crap. We're going to read it because we're going to find out between the lines where the truth lies. Americans, unfortunately, do not have that ability. They've been taught to believe the state. So when Obama says, we have no plans to put troops on the ground in Libya, uh, they take it for face value, whereas I think someone living in the Soviet <laughs> Union would, would underscore the line plans. I can, meaning, Peter, once I, I, we get I there, can we tell have you, no plans, Dan, we're just going to put them in. Daniel, <laughs> uh, you know, when it comes to politics and talking to Russians, people I've known for a long time now, they read through almost everything immediately, okay, almost immediately. Scott, let me, let me go to you, because another story that comes to mind here, and how the U.S. State Department and Samantha Power uh, pushed it, was this uh, group called Pussy Riot, well, political activist group, when a group of 
of, of um, women desecrated the most important religious shrine in this country. It was never reported as such in the United States. Is that they spoke out of turn? It's freedom of speech, et cetera, et cetera. And you know what? Their propaganda, propagandizing that, works completely against them because it again unifies people in a country like Russia, where I live, and say, see, that's their value system. That's not our value system. So their propaganda coup, quote unquote, backfired against them completely because you can have a difference of opinion on politics, but insulting someone's religion like that on that scale universally united people in this country. I think they don't get that. Go ahead, Scott. Well, absolutely. It should unite people when you have somebody that's uh, made a hero in the United States that uh, desecrates something in a church, for God's sakes. I mean, when you're talking about this whole Pussy Riot uh, um, event, you know, what a, another fiasco in American news. They turned these people into heroes. Met with Hillary Clinton. I mean, for God's sakes, you know, this is not something that, you know, should have even been addressed by American diplomacy. This is something that should have been obviously, uh, uh, you know, looked down upon as, you know, these individuals are but not Peter. supposed to be going into you know, public places and acting like this. And this, what, what, what we find here is we find a, a society in the United States uh, that is easily, I mean, very easily steer, uh, steered between the lines. You know, nobody, nobody actually reads between the lines in the United States. They are actually steered uh, across the lines. And they're, they're steered across the lines because of what Daniel was saying but as Peter well, is that these individuals are, are, are one of some of the most over-entertained and misinformed individuals in the history of mankind. I agree there, Lionel. Jump in. Go ahead. Peter, I disagree with one thing. The mainstream media in particular are very good at listening and parsing and, and, and taking note of how words are phrased. When President Clinton said, it depends what the word or definition of is it is, is, you saw huh. people come out of the woodwork because of the subject matter, because of the tawdry, scabrous subject matter. But when it comes to something that's a little bit more, dare I say, academic, like oh. geopolitical, well, of, of where things yeah. are. Because don't you understand, we want to think of ISIS, for example, as this Ex mysterious group of ninjas driving white Toyotas Ex that appear exactly. out of nowhere. We it don't want to know where they are, who's funding exactly. them, or anything. You're, don't you're, ruin you're, the magic your point of, about, this, of this your, your whole point about that Clinton scandal is spot on here. Let me go to Daniel here. Because, you know, that's what people remember. Well, isn't that a shame? What about the deregulation of Wall Street? What about the destruction of Yugoslavia? What about the beginning of colored revolutions and forced regime change. What about that? Nobody remembers that. They remembered one man's zipper. That's pathetic. Go ahead, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, and what about the fact that the Federal Reserve in the U.S. destroys the middle class to pay for the warfare state, to pay for Washington, D.C.'s war regime? The richest counties in the country are all those people making fortunes around Washington, D.C. But here's, here's something that the media or the State Department spokesman or none of these people will cover about this latest deployment of troops. Uh, where is the legal authority for President Obama exactly. to send troops to Syria? He's, op he's operating under the 2001 oh, authorization go. against an organization that did not exist. It didn't <laughs> exist. So, but the press Congrats reports it only by play-by-play. By play. If they even no, mention Congress, Daniel, don't you it'll be understand? A play -by -play. Don't you who understand, Daniel, who? that the whole world has to respect international law, except for America and its friends. Sovereignty doesn't exist for American foreign policy. It's something to be trampled on all the time. Go ahead, Daniel. Keep going. Here's just one final point. The White House spokesman said uh, this week, "There quote is no geographic limits." <laughs> to where the U.S. can intervene militarily to attack ISIS. That's your point exactly, Peter. We'll go anywhere. Don't you dare ask us not to. Okay, Scott, I'm going to give you the last 10 seconds. Go ahead. Go but ahead, you know, real Peter, quick. Today, no, no, Scott, real last 10 seconds. Well, go ahead. But, this, but is Peter, clearly, this, is, this is clearly, as Daniel was saying, this is clearly a violation of the U.S. Constitution. Yep. If you look at Article 1, Section 10, it absolutely says that you are not allowed to be deploying troops around the world willy-nilly like this. And certainly even NATO, the alliance with NATO is a violation of Article 1, Section 10. And they should certainly look at shutting that down because absolutely Russia has proven that it is not an enemy. It has absolutely been an All ally right, in, the, uh, in the mess that the Americans time. have created in we Syria. We could have easily gone on for much longer. Many thanks to my guests in New York, Tampa, and include. And thanks to our viewers for watching us here at RT. See you next time. And remember, crosstalk rules.